We just got done hiking the Lost Creek Wilderness Trail here in Colorado. I have what could possibly be the most expensive backpacking setup you could possibly buy. And Emmett, behind the camera, has a pretty good budget, six times cheaper setup than I've got. Which one performed best? You're about to find out. Backpacking setup I picked out completely based on price alone. And we're not talking budget gear, we're talking how expensive could I possibly get. Normally when you pick out your gear for a backpacking trip, you're doing it based on climate, terrain, location, that kind of stuff. Not on this backpacking trip. Totally based on price. Probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. Let's find out. As a contrast, I gave Emmett really good gear, but it's also very budget friendly. So literally like a fraction of the price of what I brought. Um, and we'll tell you how much he brought, what he brought, and even the prices. As a matter of fact, why don't we, why don't we just pause right here and show them. And we'll make sure that all of the gear that we're showing you today, the super expensive and the budget, good budget stuff, is in the description below everything so you can check it out yourself for like current prices. And if you wanna pick it up, you can use those links. All right, let's talk about this backpack. This is the Osprey Unlimited Anti-Gravity 64 liter backpack. This is a $700 backpack. As far as I'm aware, this is like by a landslide, the most expensive backpacking backpack you could possibly buy. Is it worth 700 bucks? I will tell you that we've hiked maybe 15 miles so far, so not a ton of miles, obviously. First trip, I had it packed out with about 32 to 35 pounds worth of gear, you know, food, water, fuel for three days, all the gear, all the, and we, we did not pick gear on weight, we picked it on price. It carried exceptionally well. This was the most comfortable backpack I have ever worn. The engineering that went into this backpack is so next level. So is it worth $700? I would never buy this backpack to just use it. I bought this backpack for this video. <laughs> so I hope a lot of you guys watch this. Look at just how ventilated it is. Everything is ventilated. There were no sweaty spots on me whatsoever. I didn't feel like it was sweat, uh, you know, too hot. This whole back panel here is 3D printed carbon. Like what? The adjustments. All you gotta do is pull these little load lifter tabs here and it adjusts like everything. I've never seen anything like it ever. Would I buy it to use it backpacking? No, I would not because I can get away with other backpacks that will do the job and do the job really well. But for those of you out there that are like into super expensive things, I'm not gonna lie, this was pretty epic. All right, let's talk about this tent. It's an 1100 dollar tent. This is by like a landslide, the most expensive tent that I've got now. This company reached out to me just coincidentally and said, hey, we've got these tents. Do you want, do you want to check them out? I went to their website. I couldn't believe the price on it. Uh, they're a French company and they just happen to have one shop here in the United States that is located coincidentally in Denver. So we picked this thing up right as we were coming out here and the store that it was at, like this uh, showroom place, showed me how to set it up. <laughs> So, why is this thing $1,100? Well, they say that it is sort of that tent that is going to be the all-season tent. It's a four-season tent, but you can use it all year long. Now, I know you can use a four-season tent all year long, but this one only weighs like three pounds all in. It's got a Dyneema bottom, Dyneema parts all around it. There's a Dyneema, Dyneema uh, vent on top here. And then this is also like a fully freestanding tent that's like a really good freestanding tent. So it holds its form. A lot of freestanding tents kind of end up like this until you stake it out and then it pops out like this. This one is, this is a rock solid $1,100 tent. So I guess this could be a tent that would replace you having to buy two tents. Maybe you could look at it that way. Samaya. So I think you guys made a pretty cool product so far. That's the tent I've got, $1,100. Oh, and the stakes I use, MSR Groundhogs, the big ones. 
best stakes ever. I replace all the tent stakes that come with all my tents with these. Emmett, I just realized not everything I brought is super expensive. Really? I thought you were just flexing all this expensive gear. I am, but this app, Onyx Backcountry, is only $23 for the entire year. Hashtag not sponsored by Onyx, by the way. I just think this thing is so awesome that everybody should go out and buy it. It's a navigation app that tells us where we're going and where to camp and uh, we can track what we're doing and we can find locations and do all kinds of great stuff. Literally 23 bucks for the year with my code. Link in the description. Sleeping pad, Thermarest Neo Air X Therm. This version is the, I think the long and wide version. So this is the largest one they make. This is the most expensive pad I have. It's $279, I think. Um, it's also one of my favorite pads for one big reason. It's like an all season pad. So this could be also like the tent, the pad that you buy one time and you don't have to buy a second pad. So you would not have to buy like a three season pad and then a winter pad, which this would end up probably being cheaper. So if you camp all year long, this might be the pad for you. However, $279 for a sleeping pad is extremely expensive. So if you're gonna do it a lot, it might be worth it. If you're not gonna do it a lot, mm, maybe not. $600 sleeping bag. Would you buy a $600 sleeping bag? The reason I think this one's 600 bucks is because uh, as far as I can tell, this is the uh, Western Mountaineering Versalite sleeping bag, by the way. Their sleeping bags are the best warmth to weight ratio of any sleeping bag on the market. So this one ends up having a comfort rating of about 15 degrees. It's a 10 degree bag, but it's comfort rated to about 15, maybe 20 if you're a cold sleeper. And it only weighs two pounds. Two pounds, that's extremely lightweight for this bag. So this is the most expensive sleeping bag that I own. It's actually $605. My favorite pillow, Thermarest compressible pillow. This is the small version, 25 bucks. I bring two of them because I like to use one as sort of a side pillow, and one behind my head. Okay, uh, this is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer UL jacket. I'm not exactly sure about the prices of everything. I think this is 375 bucks new. Emmett's gonna put all the prices up on screen. Is it worth it? Seven ounces super warm, but there are much cheaper options out there that can do just as good of a job as this that are still pretty lightweight. Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. This is like $170. I think this is worth every penny. This is seven ounces. It's like the perfect mid-layer ever. This thing is absolutely amazing. If you've got the money, you're looking for a great mid-layer, synthetic hoodie, zips down a little bit. Awesome, this thing's amazing. Let me see that camera real quick. <sighs> Matter of fact, uh, Emmett has the exact same jacket. Emmett, what do you think of it? I think it's awesome. Actually, I liked it so much that I asked Dan if I could have it, and thankfully he said yeah. <laughs> He's a lucky guy. This is the Tushar rain jacket by Outdoor Vitals. This is a $229 rain jacket, so it's literally the most expensive rain jacket that I own. It's only 7.4 ounces for this version, and um, it's comparable to other uh, ver other rain jackets on the market that only have a seven denier nylon, which is really thin. This is a 20D nylon, and it's actually got this like body mapped nylon. So the gray on me is where it is more water resistant. This is less water resistant. This is a little bit heavier weight, less heavy weight. And the, this color, <laughs> what color is this, Emmett? Like maroonish. Maroonish color is 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Both are still breathable, but it is waterproof kind of where you'd get wet the most. And the inside, it's actually got um, this white interior. Everything's seam tape, white interior. And there's some sort of 3D printing going on here. I'm not sure what that's all about, but they spent a lot of time designing this. So is it worth $229? I think so, because it's um, one of those jackets that you know, it's not gonna rip and shred and tear and it's probably going to be pretty durable for the amount of weight. So it's reasonably priced for things on the market. This is my winter hat, watch this. Look at that. This is a down hat by Outdoor Research, 650 fill down, I think. Um, and this thing is super lightweight, packs obviously into a pocket and you can stick it pretty much anywhere in your backpack. And this thing is, I think 40 bucks. I love this thing. Take it with me in all kinds of cold weather trips, even when it's 70 degrees like now, like now, but at 
nighttime, it last uh, the other night it dipped like into the low 30s, so this was really useful. Also expensive. Helinox Chair Zero, backpacking chair, very expensive, $120. Is it worth it? Yes. Nothing else? Nothing else. Uh, yeah, uh, super lightweight, weighs only a pound. Oh, and have you noticed, by the way, that all of the expensive gear that we're talking about is been, has been blue and black, or like blue and gray? Like, I, I kind of feel like if something is blue and black or blue and gray, it's automatically gonna be super expensive. <laughs> Total coincidence, but very weird at the same time. Most expensive trekking poles that I own, they're not the most expensive trekking poles out there. This is the Gossamer Gear LT5 trekking poles. These are the carbon fiber trekking poles. They're the three part trekking pole. Uh, this is not a cork uh, handle. This is the foam handle. It looks like cork. $100 per trekking pole, but they weigh like five ounces. So I grabbed my uh, spoon, my most expensive spoon I own. It's $8. <laughs> Had to, I've only picked on price. And then this pot is the old tried and true. I've had this for years. This is my uh, ever new titanium pasta pot. When I first bought this, it was $70. I looked it up on Amazon like last week just to, you know, as I was pricing everything out. This is now $100. What? Thank you, inflation. And then I'm also using the um, uh, MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe Stove, which is $80 right now. So my pot and my stove alone is $180. Is it worth $180 or 150 bucks or whatever? 180, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it is not. You can get just as good of stuff for much cheaper. Emmett was able to boil food for $30. We added it up, right? Uh, yeah. How much is my full setup? Your full setup is like 30 bucks out the door. Nice. And he's eating just like, just as well as me. Except so. not coffee. Yeah, you're fired. <laughs> Hilltop Packs food bag, expensive, 50 bucks if you want the one that you can uh, you know, print anything you want on there. Is it worth it? It's, it is if you're gonna use your food bag all the time and you like stuff printed on it, but you certainly can find other things to be a food bag, even just like bags at your house, so. Using the Grail water filter, most expensive water filter I own, uh, and it filters viruses as well as protozoa and bacteria. I also should have mentioned that um, Emmett is using some of the really good gear that's not very expensive. He's using, although it is kind of an expensive water filter though, the Katadyn B free filter, but it's like, I think like half the cost of this. So both are great. You don't need to spend money on this, although it is pretty awesome. Hilltop Packs, uh, this is their bear line hanging food, hanging kit thing. Dyneema bag, it's got the cordage on the inside, like a lot of cordage, like 50 feet or something like that. Is this worth it? You can certainly make something like this yourself, but you know, if you don't want to, it's not super cheap, but it's nice to have for sure to be able to hang your food pretty much anywhere. Garmin InReach Mini 2, this is a $400 satellite communicator, connects to family back home, tracks you, has an SOS button here. Uh, this is the only satellite communicator I've ever used and it is super reliable. This is the number two, did I mention it was the number two? It's the number two. The only difference is it's got a little bit better battery life, screen's a little bit newer, um, and it's USB-C. This thing's awesome. Totally worth it in my opinion. Satellite communicator, 400 bucks expensive, but if you backpack a lot, like all this stuff, it's worth it. Medkit, Adventure Medical Kit 0.5. I actually had to replace the bag after like five years, Emmett. It's been a long time, the zipper snapped off. So anyway, I, as the stuff gets emptied out, and used, I replace it with stuff from home because I like this bag. Leatherman Squirt Multi-Tool, it's pretty expensive. I'm not exactly sure how much it costs. We'll put it up on the screen, right Emmett? Yep. Yep, awesome. Most expensive multi-tool for backpacking I've got. Black Diamond Spot R headlamp. This is very expensive, but it's a rechargeable spot headlamp. Super awesome. This is also expensive. Probably already mentioned that. And then, $20 buff, not too bad, Merino wool. The brand is buff, this is a neck gaiter, by the way, if you call it a buff, it's, the brand is buff. So, but these are awesome. So, there's that. I think you're buff. Isn't it obvious I'm buff? I know, when I hike, normally people say, Dan, could you maybe hike shirtless? 
I, I do get flattered by that, but I don't. So don't ask. Here's pretty much everything that's in my ditty bag. Oh, and I can't forget about the actual ditty bag that it's all carried in by Hilltop Packs, printed. Cost this. Okay, we're back in my backyard. Uh, what's the synopsis of this entire trip? I think it's probably that expensive gear definitely has its place. This trip was obviously out of nowhere as far as like choosing the expensive gear. So it's sort of an unfair test for some of it. Like the sleeping bag was obviously way too warm for this environment, but in other environments, it'd probably be great. Emmett had some budget-ish. Some of it was a little expensive gear. Emmett, what did you think of your setup? Yeah, I just think this this trip proved that the budget setup um, will always hold a candle to some of the more expensive gear. Every piece of gear I had performed at a very high level, I would say. Um, there were some things that um, maybe were a little bit uh, annoying at times, but I think that has more to do with like picking out the right gear for me, but rather based on picking out gear based on price. So the wisdom after just two back pack backpack trips, it's probably because he's got a great teacher. It is. It is. So there you have it. Was the expensive gear better than the budget gear? Sometimes possibly, sometimes not. Depends on you. I guess in some situations, somebody's just going to want a super, super expensive backpack sleep system just because you want to have that. <laughs> you like the Cadillac and the Mercedes when you could just drive a Honda. A Honda. Or a Subaru. Or a Subaru. So, hope you guys like this video. We'll see you in the next one.